Welcome to our conference, Bioeconomy Co-Creation. Today we're going to talk about upscaling. And my name is Anna Karin Nyberg. I'm an internet researcher, an author, and a teacher. And I live a couple of Swedish miles up north. But today we are still in Örnsköld's week. This is the second day of the conference. And it's still summer. The summer is emerging just as we speak. It's a beautiful summer day here in Örnsköld's week. Yesterday we listened to pitches and presentations and it became obvious that the issues that the conference is addressing are both complex and challenging, at the same time full of interesting potential. And yesterday we also listened to uh, presentations about residual and circular streams and how they might come into use. That is, how waste for one actor might become the foundation for new innovation for another actor. Another way of talking about this is industrial symbiosis. And we have a lot of interesting examples. I'm going to highlight two of them that's situated here in the High Coast Innovation Park in Örnsköldsvik. One example is... Uh, rice processum who creates fish from uh, fish feed sorry <laughs> fish feed from biomass from the forest and another example is ecohelix and uh, what's interesting with these examples is that they all cooperate uh, in order to to emerge and develop new service and products and uh, everybody needs each other it's a co-creation it's a kind of industrial symbiosis. And the overall goal for today is to m find ways to make use of the forest as a raw material and to collaborate in innovative ways. And more specific, we're going to talk about upscaling today. And just as yesterday, the day is divided into two parts. And this part, is what we call the webinar part, and it ends in approximately one hour. And then I'm going to leave the floor to my colleague, Maria Olofsson, who will guide you through what we call meet and greet. That's the part where you can mingle and deepen the discussions, exchange information, so you can perhaps establish new rela business relationships or deepen already existing ones. So that's what we call meet and greet. And um, I know that yesterday's meet and greet was really, really success successful. Maria, she told me that the discussions were lively and the energy was really high. So we hope for that today as well. Okay, about you in the audience, I know that you, you come from all corners of the world and we are of course very happy uh, to hear that. And I would like for you to try the chat, so please uh, go into the chat and tell me where are you and what company do you represent. And uh, in the chat you will meet our moderator, our Finnish colleague uh, within the project, Raya Har Harlamov. So she's a chat moderator. Okay, while you are uh, pre uh, presenting yourselves in the chat, I'm going to present one of the conference organizers. It's Jon Moreus, and I would like to welcome you, Jon, and congratulate you to a uh, very successful event. Um, thank I will you. <laughs> thank you. I will give the floor, the digital floor, to you. The Thank you. And first of all, just a warm welcome to this event. And I want to also say our event, because just like Anna Karin was talking about, this is a collaboration opportunity, a business opportunity for you who listen and are joining this. So bioeconomy, co-creation, we wanted to really look at the possibilities within upscaling and we pretty fastly noticed that we wanted to gather a lot of different people. So we are looking at uh, attendees now with uh, scientists, companies, entrepreneurs, students, politicians, investors, clusters and startups. And I just want to say warm welcome to you all. When it comes to upscaling, as we see it, of course, we all have different uh, ways of uh, explaining it, but as we see it, 
we need the, the broad picture. We need to see everything and see how we can work together for, for a better future or more sustainable future. And the event, we are focusing much on innovation and the collaboration. The collaboration about your, you people and who you are representing and see what can we see kind of benefits or possibilities. And what I'm talking about right now is the meet and greet. And that is what Anna Karin also said is that is something that's coming a little bit later on in the agenda. And you maybe already seen it right down on your left hand side. You see the button, the meet and greet button. So don't press that one yet because we have so interesting big companies and SMEs as soon presenting themselves. So please stay in this area a little bit more. But the meet and greet area was important to, uh, to think about when we started that one about like, what are we missing now when it is Corona? You know, the time when we were out conference meetings or events and we could see like the, uh, maybe an inspiring speaker or a company that we wanted to meet. And right there at the coffee break, maybe you could like, hello, my name is, and introduce yourself. So this is what we are trying to build and make in this meet and greet area and this working there. So in the meet and greet area, there are gonna be four different themes. It's gonna be sustainability, biorefinery, circularity, and R&D. And all of these ones, I really wanna, uh, push you to go into the groups and discuss around it. But who are we? This is Future Clean Tech Solutions. Uh, as you can see on the film, right, uh, the picture right in front of you. And I really want to thank Interreg Botnia Atlantica, uh, the Regional Council of Österbotnia, Västerbotten and Västnorland for making this possible. And these ones are also financed by, uh, we are financed, sorry, uh, by these wonderful uh, organizations. So thank you so much for making this possible. So this is the area that we are working from. We are uh, in the Sweden and Finland and in the middle of those two countries. And this is the project goals. We are working with cross-border cooperation in information sharing business relations between cleantech SMEs and large regional investments. And we are working in the different areas of chemistry, energy, bioeconomy and smart cities. Uh, we also work a lot with cluster development. So this is also, you know, both the business, big companies, SMEs, but also uh, just the cluster. But before I talk any more about that, I want to show you a movie about our project. Here it is. So welcome back. That, so that was pretty much the, uh, the project movie. And I just want to show you one more film. I, I kind of love films, especially when they are inspiring. So I truly want to show you one more film. And this one is about this event. So see and enjoy. 
With this event, we want to contribute to our journey towards the 2030 climate goals. To succeed, we in the bioeconomy industry need to work as one. The forest has big opportunities, but at the same time, it's also the green lines of the earth. We need to handle the forest with respect. Through good collaboration and successful innovations, we can work faster and be stronger together. This is our way to gather people who want to be a part of the future and the solution. Welcome to Bioeconomy Co-Creation. I, I just feel so happy and inspired seeing this uh, film. So I just, that's pretty much what I do in my <laughs> spare time. No, uh, but before we let everything go and just proceed with this event, I want to make a small shout out and really thank High Coast Innovation Park for letting us use their studio here in Örnsköldsvik. So thank you for that. But enough said about future clean tech solutions and everything else. Let's, let's start meeting all these uh, companies. So, yeah. let's go start. Thank you very much, John, for your presentation. And uh, once again, congratulations for this successful event. I know that you have managed to gather a really broad uh, audience where all important voices are heard. And that's, of course, really important. So, congratulations. Before we start, I would like to focus a little bit on the word upscaling. For me, upscaling is about issues regarding globalization to attract capital, competence, networks, new knowledge to build clusters and so on and so on. John, this feels like a huge challenge. Where to start? I, I think this is a really good start. Uh, just uh, looking at maybe other companies do have had the same trip that you're uh, the same voyage. Maybe it's, it's a better word. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but I also see that upscaling can be on so many different ways. It can be on a company way that you're scaling up your company or it's the industrial process that you're scaling up. Mm. And this is pretty interesting because this is what Klaus Engström is going to talk more about later on. Uh, but it's also just having in mind that uh, upscaling for your company and so can also mean a lot for your person as yourself. Mm thinking about that. Yeah. It's a complex area. Uh, I know that we have a lot of interesting companies and pitches, startups that we're going to listen to today. Mm. Do you want to say, to say something brief uh, about the choices you, you have made within the team uh, with regards to upscaling? Uh, wh when we were looking at it and starting to uh, see what companies who wanted to be a part of this. Uh, usually, you know, you find those entrepreneur people that say, oh, we want to be a part of this. We want to. And uh, of course, it's, uh, it's just nice to be able to follow their journey. So yesterday we had so good result under the meet and greet. So mm. today I'm looking forward just mm. to follow them okay. through this. Thank you very much. I will get back to you later. But before we continue uh, and introduce the pitches and the company presentations, I would like to present a greeting from our Swedish Minister of Industry and Innovation, ladies and gentlemen, Ibrahim Bailan. Hello, dear friends. Sweden aims to be the first fossil free welfare society in the world. As one of the world's most innovative countries, climate change lays the foundation for new solutions and economic development. It strengthens our competitiveness and creates tomorrow's jobs and welfare. We now increase resources for research and innovation. We create an action plan for the circular economy and with co-creation we found, find solutions to our common challenges. A competitive forest industry is central to achieving our goals. The forest industry has made large investments that provide a good precondition for continuing to use the raw material in a smart, innovative and responsible way within the framework of the transition to a bioeconomy. 
Good luck with the conference and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Ibrahim Bailam. It feels really nice to know that we have the Swedish government supporting this uh, important conference. Okay. Now, dear audience, it's time to introduce a re an interactive part of this conference. Uh, I, I would like to introduce Nikki Schmidt and her colleague Mina. They come from a business called Big Brain Agency. Hello, Nikki, and welcome to our second day of the conference. You are going to live scribe. Please explain to us what is live scribing. Yes, of course, you uh, will very soon see what it is, but it's been uh, around for a long time and uh, it's about uh, getting a picture together, uh, a visualization of what you want to create and also what you're talking about and what's happening so you can reflect together and get a common understanding. Okay, interesting. And I, I, I heard you explain to me before the conference that uh, it, it emerged in the 1980s in Silicon Valley, and I thought it was a new phenomenon or a new um, new uh, profession, but um, you learned that, you taught me that it wasn't that new. Can we please have a look at your um, work? I know that you have already started, or perhaps we're going to look at the, the uh, live scribe from yesterday, is that right? Yes, so this was the intro that we right, had right now but you will see a little recap from yesterday. Here we had two of the, the big interviews okay. uh, where they were looking for uh, ideas and uh, some, um, some new, new uh, solutions to problems that they have and also the, the material and money that they can provide. And we also had some pictures like we will have today um, that you can see here okay. where a lot of and the focus, of course, yesterday was uh, residual and circle streets. Mm. I'm curious how much of your work is improvisation and analysis in the moment as we speak, and how much is preparation for you? Of course, it's good to have a comprehension of what's, uh, what the theme is about. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think very active listening, uh, which of course is important in every collaboration and um, meeting between people is that you listen deeply in the moment to understand what people want to to tell others and also to to what they need mm. it's a bit difficult in a way you decide what this conference is all about it's it's uh, <laughs> i guess it's truly challenging i'm really impressed by your work and also i guess you must learn a lot about different areas of expertise uh, this is also a new um, industry to me so there are a lot of new words uh, that's industry specific it's quite tricky yes it is but i think it, there can be a little bit of an advantage for someone that isn't um, maybe in the the field already because there will be a lot of different people as you said in the beginning mm. students and uh, scientists and politicians and not everyone knows the technical language so here will be a more general image for yeah. everyone that's why your pictures are so important and valuable okay we will uh, visit you a couple of more times during the conference so i wish you good luck with your work it will be interesting to see <laughs> what you have done in in uh, 10 15 minutes and see how you have interpreted the the different presentations thank you very much nikki schmidt Okay, uh, now it's time for our first company to present their business, their challenges and their opportunities. And I'm going to give the word to RISE Institute. RISE is Research Institute of Sweden. And we're going to listen to Klaus Engström, who is a project manager of RISE. And he's coordinating the upcoming biorefinery pilot plant here in Örnsköldsvik. It's a world unique test bed and an investment by the Swedish government. And Klaus will tell us about the opportunities that the pilot brings and what we are or what they are going to fill it with when it's ready it's full of opportunities for you to grasp ladies and gentlemen klaus engström hi thank you so much my name is sanna nastrom and i am one of the organizers of this event today 
Within the project Future Clean Tech Solutions, I work with communication for clean tech companies. But today I'm sitting here together with Klaus Engström mm -hmm. at Rice Research Institute of Sweden. Warm welcome. Thank you. So I know that Rice is making a huge investment right now in Örnsköldsvik. Well, it's basically a, a project that was initiated by the Swedish government. Uh, they uh, put out about 350 million Swedish crowns in order to, to build pilot equipment and the pilot park uh, targeted on scale up within the bioeconomy. Uh, mm -hmm. RISE is a very big organization with about 3000 researchers all in all, all over Sweden. And I think we are approximately about 700 and around 700 people just working within the bioeconomy and the biorefinery business. So of course there is a substantial amount of pilot equipment already, mm. but this is sort of a speed up investment that we are making to be able to put, uh, to put products and to put um, uh, companies closer to the market by, by the ability to scale up. So we are basically complementing already existing equipment and making some uh, new targeted investments on technologies where we are lacking uh, investment structure at this point. So it's a two year project. Uh, we are building both equipment, but we are also building a pilot hall here in Ernst Week, quite a large, actually it's more than a pilot hall. It's sort of like an investment in innovation. So this will mm -hmm. be the innovation node for for the rice bioeconomy operations in Sweden and have also internationally. So, so it's uh, basically two parts. It's a scale up, more technology part, building all these pilots and also creating an innovation environment where entrepreneurs, researchers, rice personnel can meet and to, to develop further the, the products of the bioeconomy. I've heard that it's a world unique pilot plant. Not yet, but it will be. Uh, we are, uh, targeting a few areas where we are uh, pretty sure we will have technology that, that will be unique. But the, mm. uh, the vision of the park is actually to, to, uh, to build a number of technologies in a sort of middle range scale up mm -hmm. scale. So we will be able to, to imitate a number of future biorefineries. So we will have a uh, part of the park will target uh, gasification and paralysis. A part of the park will target uh, scaling up from the sugar. Uh, part of the park will handle the lignin part of the cellulose. And we will also uh, try to, to go into CCU and CCS conversion from carbon dioxide. Mm. We are actually aiming to build a, a mid-range park where we where we hope to have uh, the possibility to, to scale up a number of technologies. So for example, if there is a, a large uh, forestry company coming to us and they want to, to produce biofuel for the aviation business, we can also look, because when you have the typical wood like this, it, it will contain, of course, the biofuel, but it will also, as you all know, contain a number of different things. And to, to be sure that you have a techno-economical case, you need to look deep into the wood and not just take care of the biofuel part. We also have to go into the other parts of, of the tree. And there we hope to be able to say to, to these companies, we can help you produce biofuel, but we can also take care of all the residual streams created in your process. And we can imitate this in a number of steps where we can see if you at the end of the day can, can produce this with a fair uh, techno-economical return on investment. Mm. So uh, this is the basic idea of the park to be able to give the complete or a more comprehensive answer than just going into one small part of the technology and say that in this slurry we have the chemistry needed and it will cost so much because often what is costly is, is often the sort of boring technologies like dewatering, drying and stuff mm. like that. So the mm. park has to contain a number of actually quite low tech technologies, but we need to know what that typical material uh, will cost to dewater or to dry before we can come back to these companies and say, you have economy in the park. So, so that is, I, I would say that that is the most important property of the park to, to build this 
more comprehensive mid-scale scale-up park. Mm. Uh, quite unique in its sort of containing all the different technologies needed. You were mentioning that 350 million Swedish crowns is invested in this project mm. from the government side. What are the criteria for, from the government perspective? Well, basically they were in the in the government bill they were quite clear on two two major things they wanted us to speed up the scaling up of biorefinery mm. solutions or help companies speed up that uh, scale up mm. and put uh, bioeconomy products on the market that's the first part and the second part is that it's also supposed to take on solutions that are a little more large scale that can contribute to uh, improving the climate situation of the world so mm -hmm. it uh, and um, it's part of the it's part of the government bill that that uh, deals with the climate changes so there is also a, a wish from the government to find solutions on climate issues and in our case and in our business that very much boils down to large scale of course mm and the problematic areas like biofuel, for example, mm. but also uh, replacing plastics and so on and so forth. Mm. So products in large scales that could uh, contribute to a substantial climate sink in its usage. That's mm. uh, what we are mostly aiming for. Why is the investment made in Örnsköldsvik? We have a very large operation in Anshas Week within RICE already with um, more research and the Processum companies with about 80, 85 people. Mm. And we also see that there is a lot of knowledge around scale up here in Anshas Week when it comes to uh, uh, companies, uh, consultancy companies and so on. Mm. So we, we have uh, already also a large pilot park in Anshas Week. So there is a number of uh, advantages for ice and Ursus Week has for about maybe 10-15 years been been quite known for its uh, development work within biorefining. So Klaus, you are the project manager of this major investment coordinating this. What are the big challenges? Well a big, uh, big challenge is actually the the very broad scope of biorefining because bioeconomy products I mean, when we really go into the bioeconomy, you will, as you find fossil products everywhere today, you will find bioeconomy products pretty much everywhere. And to bring these products to a market, we will need a number of different technologies. Yeah. So to find these technologies that are truly generic to a future biorefinery and build a, a pilot plant of biorefinery equipment that is useful in the long run, that choice to make that choice is actually quite difficult but we we are quite confident that we have picked a number of really interesting technologies all the way from from uh, developing the sugar content and developing the lignin content with high temperature conversion technologies like steam cracking and so on to mm -hmm. to more everyday technologies like uh, dewatering and uh, centrifuges and stuff like that that you need on a larger scale mm. but the big challenge is actually to to pick the right technologies and build this uh, dynamic park that could imitate a number of future biorefineries if there are smes small medium enterprises out there watching this and wanting to get in with their scale up how how should they proceed okay, first of all it's important to notice that rice is already doing this work Today, uh, we have, as I said, about 700 skilled researchers making uh, or helping companies to scale up every day from the first lab trials to, to quite big uh, investments in, in bigger scale up pilots. Uh, so I think the first thing that you could do is to contact somebody at RISE and start an idea discussion around possible needs within a scale up because mm. I gather that many SMEs are in quite different positions whether if they need to go into the lab for a couple of years or if they are starting to building their first pilots or if they are ready to go really big mm. that's a whole different story but but all in all rice is quite a big organization and we can we can help uh, companies throughout this journey and we can also apply for funding to make the more 
uh, the more heavy financial steps together with them. And uh, this investment project that we are making now, uh, that we have been talking about, it will just increase the capability of RICE technically. But the important part and the important part of the story of RICE is our competence in the different technology areas and the capability already today existing to make scale-ups. So it's time to wrap up. Thank you so much, Klaus, for joining today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for watching. And I hope that you are thrilled about this big investment and the possibilities that it brings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Klaus Engström and Sanna Näström. So with what should we fill this very fantastic opportunity with? What kind of activities, companies, areas? Well, this is not yet official, but I know that I would recommend you to write an email to Klaus and, and discuss this further with him. Perhaps you can be part of his, this interesting test bed. And if you are interested to learn more about this, please contact him via email. And I know that we have his email address in the chat. Unfortunately, Klaus cannot be with us during the meet and greet, but please contact him afterwards via email. He's happy to receive questions and mails from you. Okay, let's move on. It's time to listen to some of the pitches from the SME, small media enterprises. And I know that's an interesting mix from Sweden and Finland. It's really interesting companies. It's a, it's a great uh, geographic area. And can you please tell me something about how you have chosen them and the area? Where do they come from? Well, they come from pretty, a pretty big area yeah. and I just want to really reach out and thank our project colleagues so much for a wonderful work with finding these uh, entrepreneur companies and really energetic companies that really want to present themselves here. So big thanks to Sheleftio, Umio and of course here in Örsjösvik but especially a big thanks to our Finnish colleagues who is working in Kosek, Kokola. Merinova in Vasa and also in Vasa is Vasek. You have been uh, such a tremendous good uh, colleague in this work. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Okay, it's time to listen to the pitches. This is really exciting. Okay, the first three pitches are given by Eurocon and represented by Robert Bulin and Emily Parkman. The second pitch is given by Plant Plantvation, Johanna Johansson. And we have Jokolox, who is presented by Rainer Rönnback. So all of you out there, it's time to listen very carefully and to take notes, uh, and take notes about the websites and so on. Uh, you will see some contact information below the film. And also, you know, you can contact them afterwards during the meet and greet. Enjoy. Are you planning to start a pilot plant or a demo plant? Maybe you are thinking of scaling up to full-size production facility. How to coordinate and synchronize disciplines like plant layout, electrical instrumentation and process. How do you plan to handle data from project to maintenance and to financial systems? where to find experience resources used to work with new inventions and scaling up ideas to a pilot plant or full-scale facility. Eurocon has the answers. Eurocon is a technical engineering company founded in 1990 as a specialist company within the forestry, pulp and paper sector. As our business grew and our good renommé was spreading, the company itself grew too. Today, we are about 270 employees working in, besides the pulp and paper sector, both chemistry, biochemistry, mining, infrastructure, energy and more. Our headquarter in the city of Örsjösvik is located right in the middle of the research and development area where both rice processum, more research, a biorefinery and two chemical production sites are our closest neighbors. 
Eurocon was one of the driving forces involved in the start of the two research institutes More Research and Processor. Except for Örnsköldsvik, we got offices all around Sweden. For example in Kiruna, Sundsvall, Stockholm, Växjö and Gothenburg. Together with our clients, we create an efficient and sustainable future. And our most valuable assets are our skilled, engaged and professional employees. Welcome to Eurocom. Eurocom has experience from new green projects, Sea Green and EcoHelix. Eurocon has delivered engineering services and set up and mastered a site-based database for their projects, including design, installation, commissioning and startup. SiteBase is our own project tool for coordinating our engineers' work into a common platform that can be connected to maintenance, financial systems as well as engineering tools. For example, AutoCAD, E3D and Microsoft Office. This is a tool for scaling up and to make the engineering more cost-effective and, of course, to secure the quality of the work. What can we do for you and your company? Do you want to find out more about our way of working and to meet some of our skilled personnel? Contact us, Eurocom. My name is Johanna Johansson and I'm the CEO at Plantvation. We are an innovative Swedish company that combines technology with nature. We have developed and offers the cultivation solution of the future for forestry seedlings. It is called the QS Greenbox and I would like to present it as the self-driving cars generation of cultivation. It is a vertical, fully automated system that in an efficient and sustainable way can produce high quality seedlings and give them the best possible start in life. I will now show a short movie that will explain and visualize it further. This is how we would like the world to look like from the outside, but that is not the case. The world is standing in front of a serious climate crisis with rising temperatures, natural disasters and high CO2 levels. By planting more trees, we reduce CO2 levels in the atmosphere. Let's explore the cultivation solution of the future. The QS Green Box, a fully automated cultivation system in a closed environment. Program the perfect recipe and just press start. The QS Green Box can produce 12 million seedlings per year on only 100 square meters all year round. Anywhere in the world, one QS Green Box reduces trees to reforest an area of 7,000 football pitches, which decrease CO2 emissions of 4,800 cars. Plantvation, contribute to a greener future. Go to www.plantvation.com to learn more. The QS Green Box can be installed at forestry nurseries and be implemented in their current production process. But it can also be installed anywhere. For example, at industry plants like this illustration. That means that you can achieve a sustainable production cycle at the plant, reduce CO2 and use energy from the industrial processes in the cultivation, and then recover the energy and pass heat to use in the industrial buildings at the plant. In the bigger picture, the seedlings will start at the plant, get transported to a nursery, grow tall in the forest and then come back to the industry and become sustainable products as paper, wood or textiles. We have our first big scale installation installed and up and running at a nursery within Holman School. And we are now working on getting more installation out on the market. Interested in getting in contact with potential customers that wants to achieve a more efficient seedling production as well as potential partners or candidates that wants to be part of our journey to work towards our mission and vision. Contribute to a more efficient and sustainable reforestation and to become the leader of innovative and efficient cultivation technology. If you would like to hear more, you are more than welcome to reach out. Thank you.
Dear listener, my name is Rainer Rennebach and I'm the marketing director for Eucalyx in Finland. To stay competitive in today's world, you need constantly to move forward towards safer, better and more efficient working environment for your employees. As you know, your employees are your most valuable asset. Our mission is to create safer, better and more efficient working conditions for people by offering the latest LED solutions for demanding environments. Do you have a demanding industrial environment? Do you have EX, ATEX rated areas? Maybe you have chemicals and acids in your industrial facility. You might have warm areas or cold areas. You might have places where dust and gases are present. Maybe your inventory is submitted to mechanical strain. Your industrial site might be a process pipe jungle or a vast industrial area. When we started to develop our products, we went to the industry and asked what they really, really wanted from an ATEX or an industrial luminaire. They wanted a product that is fast to install and when it's installed, it just works and works and you can forget about it. We have tested our products through hell this is a product that's ha that has been through a living hell on earth. In places where there's heavy acids and it still works and works. We design, we develop and manufacture ATEX and industrial luminaires for demanding conditions. We basically do everything from lighting design to ATEX luminaire training. This is our high bay model basically from areas to 10 meters and up. This is our low bay model from eight to 10 meters and down. Very fast and quick to install, both made of quality components. For us, the customer is a lot more than just a customer. We strive for long lasting partnerships. We believe that with these values, we will make the difference. Smarter light, better performance. Okay, now I would like to get back to Nikki, our live scriber. Nikki, are you there? Yes, I Hi. am. Hi, how are you doing? How is it going? It's going really great. And it's so nice to see the combination between this big interview that we had with Rice mm -hmm. and how there's a platform uh, for them to, to dive into whatever they need to experience and test in the products okay. and all of the pilots. Interesting. Okay. Uh, can we see something from the pitches? There you go. Yes. So I think it's one common theme that I noticed here is that they all want to, to make the scale up process smooth. That's the, the thing that you need to focus on is your main concern and everything else they can make easier for you. And also, uh, of course, they, they need to scale up, but they help others to scale up. It is so interesting. Uh, can we just play with this picture? Uh, I just want to hear, is it that you start writing or do you listen first and then start writing? Or I'm just so impressed that you can produce this much in such a short time. Uh, it depends. This, uh, these talks are so fast. So uh, I, I try to draw as I listen, but sometimes I, I take some time to understand uh, better what you want to tell. Mm. And I, I heard when we talked before this conference, you told me that when the tempo is even higher than today, for instance, when there are live debates on, on the stage and so on, you have your colleague Mina who helps you to to write important words down so you can remember what to draw. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious, who decides what level of details is the correct one? Um, 
as I understand, Mina is the one who abstracts the importance uh, from the conversation at, at those uh, times. What happens if you disagree? <laughs> uh, as I'm the one holding the pencil, uh, I guess I'm <laughs> also the one <laughs> that in the end decides what's going to be drawn. But uh, of course, it's good to have uh, different views on it. So it becomes more democratic what's, what the meaning really is. Mm. But, but hey, Nikki, I just uh, just want to ask if you would go to the grocery store, do you like write it down or do, do you make pictures? Uh, how does it work? I have uh, a, an emoji checklist in my phone. So I use images, <laughs> but I don't draw them myself. <laughs> so you're doing the visual thing also yeah. there. All right. I do. Nice. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, let's move on. Thank you very much, Nikki. Now it's time to introduce next company, and that's the Valky Group and Annika Sundell, who is the innovation and business work with innovation and business development at the Valky Group. She has a long experience of managing complex R&D projects and product scale-up activities within the packaging industry. And I know that she's looking for collaboration, especially in the areas of sustainable packaging, bio-based barriers, coatings, barrier materials from the forest. And uh, our uh, Finnish project colleagues within the project Future Clean Te Tech Solutions met with Annika earlier this week and talked to her about the future and potential collaborations. Ladies and gentlemen, Annika Sundell. Thank you for joining us uh, in this uh, session uh, from this beautiful location here in Jakobstad, Pietarsaari in Finland. So we are uh, at this location very close to uh, our neighbors in, in Sweden and we can almost see you from, from this spot. My name is uh, Annika Sundell, I'm representing Valki Group and uh, I have been uh, leading the global innovation and business uh, development activities in Valki for about two and a half years. Most of my working life I have been engaged in uh, uh, R&D, uh, bringing new uh, products, solutions to the market in various fields such as uh, pharmaceuticals, technical uh, applications, and uh, most of the time very much engaged in the fascinating field of uh, packaging. For Valki, sustainability is really in the core of our strategy and consequently also very closely linked to our R&D activities. We have a very ambitious uh, vision and mission that we want uh, to uh, accelerate the world's transition into a zero waste uh, future. More in detail, we want uh, to translate uh, products and, and services into the circular economy and away from the linear one that we are uh, used to. Valki wants in this uh, journey to take a leading role together with uh, uh, our collaboration partners and uh, clients. We are about 1,000 employees that are daily working towards our uh, mission. Uh, we are about a 350 million euro company. We have a strong presence in Finland with uh, our headquarter and three uh, of our plants located here. And in, the in addition, we have a strong plant network uh, across uh, Europe and also a plant uh, in China. Our core technologies include uh, coating, lamination and uh, printing. We serve our clients in three different uh, business areas. Two of them are closely related to packaging. You will find Valkis products uh, in a number of uh, uh, products you use in your daily life like a lidding on a yogurt cup, uh, like the paper pouch uh, for your morning muesli, 
or a, a carton board box for a frozen, uh, frozen food. Uh, additionally, you would find it as a wrapper around the copy paper and even uh, when taking out your, your bio waste, you will use a Valky product for carrying the bio waste. Uh, on the industrial packaging side, many uh, uh, paper, carton or steel will leave their respective meals wrapped in a Valky uh, packaging. Within our business area engineered materials, we are engaged in providing uh, solutions for, uh, for a healthy, uh, energy efficient and uh, fire safe built and uh, living environment. An additional example of uh, products uh, in our engineered materials uh, business area is the protective clothing. Uh, the protective clothing business line has shown its importance in, during the ongoing pandemic, uh, keeping uh, uh, everyday heroes safe in uh, performing their uh, demanding tasks. Our strong sustainability agenda is uh, supported by ambitious uh, R&D activities. Uh, here in, in Jakobstad, we have uh, our technical competence center located to support our uh, Valky R&D community. The Valky R&D community is our internal network of technical experts. To the technical competence center here, we have uh, uh, our uh, pilot lines installed. Uh, so we have uh, uh, infrastructure of uh, pilot equipment that enable us to uh, make rapid prototyping. We can engage in, uh, in concept development, but we can also develop the final product uh, together with clients or uh, collaboration partners. So when we uh, embarked the sustainability journey, it was, all, it was in, in an early stage uh, because we are very much engaged in consumer product and uh, the whole movement has been started from uh, the consumers. We wanted our products to be uh, either uh, uh, recyclable or compostable. And eventually, we also want them to be uh, based on either renewable or uh, recycled material. This is how we structured the work into these uh, three pillars, recyclable, compostable and renewable, that we believe have, has a very strong uh, part in the transition what is ongoing. When we have had structure, um, our targets in these pillars, we also uh, had to, to think about what kind of capabilities, what kind of technologies, what kind of new materials do we need to develop in order to make this uh, uh, a reality. And this is what our uh, Zero Waste Future platform is all about. It is a collection of uh, technologies and know-how that we can use when we are developing products that will fit into uh, the circular economy. So I have brought some examples of our uh, recently launched uh, product innovation. And this hamburger box may serve as an example of what we have uh, recently launched. Uh, first benefit what uh, such a box will bring is that it enables the food producers to change from a non-recyclable, uh, difficult um, foam styrene, what is normally used for, for such a box, into a fiber-based uh, recyclable packaging. Um, Cellulosic fiber, paper and board, as excellent materials as they are, we know that sometimes uh, they will not provide the barriers needed for such a, a, a food product. And uh, this is where the Valky innovation uh, comes along. So we have equipped uh, 
the material with uh, barriers that prevent, for instance, the packaging from being stained from fat. If uh, fat staining would uh, happen, it would mean that the product risk to be rejected from recycling, even if it would be designed to be recycled. Additionally, uh, it, we know that it might occur that uh, a consumer would not eat the entire meal and a part of the meal would remain in the box. Not that we uh, encourage uh, uh, creating bio-waste, but we for sure know that this might happen. And we also, for that reason, wanted our uh, product to be compostable. So it could go along uh, to the bio-waste stream and turn into a valuable compost. Naturally, the same concept can be used for uh, a number of other uh, packaging formats, like trays or uh, pouches as well. We have learned uh, in the ongoing transition and through the projects that we have been engaged in that uh, the magnitude of uh, the transition ongoing is too extensive for any single R&D organization, company or even a part of a value chain to work on alone. If we want uh, really to uh, transfer into a circular economy, we have to work together in uh, ways that uh, might not have been uh, standard practice uh, er earlier. Valky R&D uh, community is through our uh, Valky Innovation Hub concept engaged in a number of projects together with experts that we have combined from uh, different parts of value chain, uh, expert fields in order to solve the, the task at hand. The general approach for uh, R and, uh, a Valky R&D uh, initiative is a collaborative approach. Very seldom we engage in purely in-house uh, uh, R&D initiatives. And I will give you an example of uh, what a typical packaging transition project could look like. So we would need uh, experts from uh, chemistry providers, uh, from, uh, for instance, from the printing industry, from uh, packaging machine suppliers. We have to engage the, the food company and eventually also uh, the companies uh, providing recycling services. So all of these uh, experts have to work together to realize a project like I just showed you in, uh, in the form of a hamburger box. We have uh, embarked the journey and as I have shown you, we are already in the process, especially in the area of the packaging of enrolling um, the solutions out on the market. Of course, we have started from the low hanging fru fruits together with the, the rest of, of, of the industry. And it is our intention to uh, go deeper into the subject and to engage in more and more complex uh, packaging. Yes, and we are very much uh, interested in, in coming into contact with anyone that have a great packaging idea, uh, material that can be bring barriers to, to packaging or especially in the field of bio-based uh, uh, components to, to packaging. The second part we want to engage in is now to bring also our zero waste future concept outside of the packaging. We are looking also into other, uh, exploring other uh, areas like, uh, for instance, the batteries, uh, battery components, ecosystems, packaging needed for, for this uh, uh, business. If you like to join us on our journey towards a zero waste future and ha have a great idea that you would like to share with us, you can uh, contact, uh, uh, contact us by email or through the contact details uh, that are provided here or through our, our web pages. 
We will also be uh, available in the afternoon for the meet and greet session to discuss about the uh, topics. Thank you very much, Annika Sundell, and for all of you who are interested in continue talking about the opportunities with Valky Group, contact Annika in the meet and greet and take the conversations further. Okay, it's time for another round of pitches. And now you know how this works. Uh, don't forget to make notes and write, now, write down contact information and web addresses and so on. We have three more interesting pitches. I'm going to present Promo Finland, Joachim Hegblom and Andreas Sandberg, Sekon, Klaus Bergman, Innomost, Maria Svinhuvud. Dear audience, we give you three more pitches. Here you go. Welcome to Premium, your polymer extrusion specialist. My name is Joachim Hegblom. And my name is Andre Sandberg. Today there is a need for social, environmentally sustainable solutions within all industries. Primo is closely following the needs in the market. As a subcontractor, we provide tailor-made solutions depending on customer needs. At Primo, we develop and manufacture profiles from a wide range of different polymer materials. We help our customers to reduce their carbon footprint when they use polymer materials. The material used can be bio-based, recycled or traditional materials. A composite material can be a combination of almost any kind of fiber and a polymer material. When extruding profiles from these composite materials, we can achieve a higher strength, stiffness and toughness, combined with lightness. Apart from designing and producing profiles made from different polymer materials, we are an experienced partner in the development process of composite materials and production technologies. Our in-house tooling center is very often the key to a perfectly designed solution, taking into consideration every aspect in the product life cycle, from design to manufacturing and end of life. An example of how Primo can assist in developing new composite material solutions and applications for new composite materials is the Finnish startup company Onbone. Primo assisted with development of production technology and finding the optimal compound for their biomaterial compound Woodcast. Finally, the project ended up with Primo being the manufacturer of the moldable biomaterial, which is today mainly used as a substitute for traditional cast materials for splinting. Hi, my name is Klaus Bergman and I'm the CEO of SECO. We contribute to a more safe and efficient workspace for the industry by correct labeling and documentation of pipes and facilities. Let's take a closer look. Unmarked pipes in plants are often due to a lack of knowledge, interest and time. We at SECON are passionate about creating safe and accident-free workplaces by labeling facilities according to applicable laws and regulations. The majority of all pipes are insufficiently marked and documented. These deficiencies create dangerous workspaces and costs of over half a million for an incident is not uncommon. Even though we have legislation to follow, we find facilities with hazardous chemicals that sometimes completely lack labeling and do not inform about the risks. Risks that in day-to-day -day operations takes time from personnel looking for unmarked pipes and valves which in the worst case can lead to costly downtime or dangerous emissions. Metzeboard in Husum has been able to avoid this by letting us take responsibility of labeling pipes and process equipment. We have done this by working according to CCON's IMD method that ensures 
the marking is clear and follows applicable laws and regulations. In the IMD method, we work with inventory, assembly and documentation in a careful and systematic way so that we can leave correct markings and final documentation without taking time and resources from your staff. We can work independently and parallel with the day-to-day -day operations so that your colleagues can work efficiently and safe with proper labeling and documentation. These benefits are the reason Aga and Linda Group in Stockvik chose to hire us at Seacon to mark up their entire facility according to the IMD method. This resulted in Stockvik becoming the best labeled facility internal audit. Through correct marking and documentation, we contribute to a more safe and efficient workplace for the industry. Welcome to Seacon. Thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to see you at the meet and greet. Hello, I'm Maria Svinhufud and Sales Director at Innermost. I'm here to tell you about Innermost and seek partnership for collaboration. Innermost is a Finnish startup from Kokkola. We use side stream from the Nordic forest to develop and produce renewable ingredients of high quality. Our focus is cosmetics, but our ingredients can be used for many other applications. Now I'd like to ask you an open question. Where do you see that sustainable ingredient market is going in 3, 5 and 10 years? We at Innermost are in a new high growth market that generates huge opportunities in the future. Why? The industry wants to find new sustainable raw materials that can replace fossil and palm oil based sources. This is where we come into the market. We provide a sustainable solution by using the wooden side streams that would otherwise be burnt for energy. In our process, we use the outer bark of birch to extract and refine sustainable ingredients such as betulin and suberin. In this way, we give the side stream a new life. What are the benefits that we bring? Apart from being a solution within the circular bioeconomy, our ingredients have great properties for many applications. Both betulin and suberin are very hydrophobic compounds. Compared to many competitive vegetable oils and waxes, our ingredients are stable against oxidation and they can be modified for different purposes. These properties make them excellent, for example, in film forming applications. And then our team. We are two founders in Innermost, our CEO Sami Selkela and me. Sami has a PhD in organic chemistry and a long history within the chemical industry. I've been working with R&D and sales in the cosmetic and technochemical industry for over 20 years. What we're doing now is just the starting point of our innovation potential. If you're interested in finding out more about the opportunities for cooperation, join us in the meet and greet session starting soon. You can also contact me by email and phone. Thank you for your time and see you soon. Thank you very much, Joakim Hegblom, André Sandberg, Klaus Bergman, Maria Svinhuvud, and they will all be available during the meet and greet session in about 10 minutes. Okay, it's time for the last talk with Nikki and uh, at uh, Big Brain Agency, Nikki, I understand that you haven't uh, been able to finish the last pictures from Promo, Seacon and Innermost, but please show us your work, your ongoing work. Uh, I, I have, in right now, <laughs> I, we're on the, the interview, so you will see a little bit from uh, Annika's speech uh, before and her, her interesting uh, inputs of what they need and how they work but you will also see the pictures here. And they, I really warmed up yesterday, so it was a bit faster today. Okay. But of course, there's always <laughs> things to do, but it was, it was um, very interesting to hear about uh, how these also contribute to helping out uh, with making scaling up other kind of businesses. 
And I know that you are you actually need to work while we're chatting, so please continue your <laughs> drawing uh, <laughs> while we're chatting. Okay. It's so interesting to see your you working as we speak. So right now, uh, Nikki is working on the Seacon part of the picture. What do you say, John? Would you like to switch your uh, uh, work with uh, Nikki, or are you happy to be a business developer? What do you yeah, say? Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with my job, and I, I d truly admire yeah. this work. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering, Nikki, is it for you that you have like some typical uh, back to doing some typical drawings, or is it always how? What I'm looking after it pretty much, we are working with upscaling, thinking about creativity, mm -hmm. innovation. How do you innovate yourself? How do you work with your creativity? Well, I think because I, I am in so many different uh, fields and areas, I get a lot of inspiration because mm -hmm. even though forestry and bioeconomy is maybe very different from some other fields that I work in, I think you can learn a lot from, from the different ones. So I think I get uh, inspiration from what I hear from other places. So uh, yeah, I'm very thankful for that, that I can join and help to comp contribute uh, between the areas. Okay. Nice to hear. I, I would just want to see also the interview with Valky once again, uh, yes. just so we can really see and reconnect with those memories because we have had a lot of information mm -hmm. so packaging is in the center of course and the the um, theme of the today's conference is is uh, upscaling and we talked uh, in the in the beginning we talked about globalization to reach an international market uh, attract uh, capital competence networks and so on is it how can we understand your work from an upscaling perspective? We can help each other to answer that question. Do you understand my question? Yeah, I think so. One thing that I've been thinking about uh, looking at all of these is that um, my spontaneous thought is that I want them all to be in one company because all the solution fits so well together, just as uh, Annika talks about with the collaboration. They need uh, different people and the companies to work together. But that's the, the beauty of co-creation when it comes to upscaling, that you don't have to be one uh, unit. You can uh, connect with the ones that you, you want to, to get help from or help. And uh, I think that's the, the, <laughs> the importance of this event, of course, mm. that nice. all of these parts work together. Mm. Uh, and Nikki, could I give you a ch fast challenge? Uh, I see Klaus right now, uh, and I would really like to highlight the thing that it's important to uh, that Arnsesvik is maybe a hub, but it's also working with the world and the world with back to Arnsesvik. Can you just push ah. that into that one? So it's Absolutely. not just it's not just Arnsesvik. There's the whole the whole international. Nice. That's important, of course. Thank you very much, Nikki, Big Brain Agency. I know that you have, uh, you're going to finish the drawings and then you're going to, you organizers are going to email it to all of us who have participated yes. in the conference. It's going to be a good memory and it's a good way to remember what we have been talking about. Thank you very much, Nikki Schmidt. It's, a, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to round off our webinar part of the conference. Another interesting day has come to an end where we have been given the opportunity to learn about the potential in bioeconomy industry. It's been really, really interesting. And I'm truly impressed with all the important work that's going on in Finland and in Sweden. And I hope that there will be time for all of you to start building, deepening relations uh, at the meet and greet that will take part in, that will start in just a few minutes. And as we heard the Minister of Innovation say early in the program, Ibrahim Bailam, this is an important challenge and it demands resources in order for us to create a sustainable industry. 
Okay, the focus of today has been upscaling and in the upcoming meet and greet, you can find out how you can perhaps be part of the startup journey towards upscaling or explore how you can be part of the plant test bed uh, here in High Coast Innovation Park in Örnsköldsvik, presented by Rice Processum, or how you can get involved in the challenges presented by Valky Group. John, I'm turning to you. Thank you very much once again for another interesting day with you by my side. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I also want to say thank you to all of you who have been contributing uh, with your presentations. Klaus Engström, Robert Bullin, Emily Parkman, Johanna Johansson, Reiner Rönnback, Annika Sundell, Joakim Hägblom, André Sandberg, Klaus Bergman och Maria Svinhuvud. Thank you very much. Last but not least, thank you once again, Nicky Schmidt and Mina. And also thank you all the organizers from Sweden and Finland within the project Future Clean Tech Solutions. I also want to say thank you to all of you who have been following this webinar. I hope there will be good discussions and high energy today as well. Okay, you hear the music. It's now time for me to introduce our musician. It's Oscar Sandelin, and he will be playing live for us during the meet and greet and during the pause. Uh, and I know that you can wish for your favorite favorite tune right right down in the chat what you would like to listen to and perhaps if you're lucky Oscar will play your tune. Okay, and with that I will also hand over to my colleague from Umeå, Maria Olofsson. She will guide you through the next part of the program and you will hear from her in about 10 minutes. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.